to Father and Son. Morning, Tom. Morning, Dave. Well, what do we have to talk about today? Certainly the debates raging in the federal parliament uh, on Afghanistan. What do you make of it? Well, it's interesting. They're saying uh, it's a sort of like an open conscience vote on Afghanistan. Essentially, anybody can stand up and say whatever they like. Predictably, the major representatives of the two major parties have stood up and said that for essentially the same reasons, we have to stay there as long as it takes till the job is done. In fact, Julia Gillard came out and said it could be eight to ten years. That's a ludicrous statement to make because if the US pulls out, say, in a year or two, which is quite possible... Cause we'll be out with them. Well, I mean, how could we stay there without them? So this idea that we will stay there until the job is done, no one wants to admit it. We're there because the Americans are there. As soon as the Americans are gone, we're gone. I've got to say, it, it doesn't reflect well upon us to have that, that It's sort interesting of reading some of the press, particularly in the Australian, about it. There, there was a retired head of the Defence Department wrote an article yesterday and he's saying they don't seem to have articulated why they're there very uh, accurately. And the result is it's getting very fuzzy. And we, you know, we've lost 21 lives mm. over there. Uh, I see they're all going to meet uh, NATO. Obama's going over there in a month or so. And maybe they're going to try and nut something out. But I never, I mean, people have fought in Afghanistan forever, and I don't think there's any solution at all. The quicker we get out, the better. Yeah, well, look, I mean, we, we went there first for one reason, and then over the last, and it's nine years now, since you know, late 2001 that we went there, the, the, the reason we're there kept, has kept evolving, and it's quite different from what, you know, was originally the case. What is also interesting, the New York Times is reporting at the moment that the uh, senior elements within the, the Karzai government in Afghanistan uh, are negotiating with representatives of the Taliban. Yes, okay. and that, that seems to be everybody's best hope of getting a government, albeit a Muslim theocratic one, which won't be all that great for a lot of people. But, you know, really, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a sort of a slow disaster, Afghanistan. I, I think we, we should get out sooner rather than later. And I, I learned from Gary Morgan the other day that uh, actually Afghanistan's got a lot of high-grade iron ore. And if they could get to mine it and get it organised, it could be a wonderful industry. Yeah, you know, there's a funny thing about mining, though. I and mean, there's heaps of countries, like in Africa especially, that have wonderful deposits of various things. But it's because of where they are and unstable governments. That's the reason people prefer to mine in Australia and Canada. Not just because the resources are good, but you don't have to well, defend yourself with, uh, you know, AK-47s. Uh, plus, the, the, the infrastructure's a lot better yes. as well. Yes. Well, <laughs> there's no infrastructure in Afghanistan. Well, they came out with the Murray-Darling report, which I think is a real mess. As we said, we've said on a number of occasions, why solve a problem that's not a problem at the moment? Every nook and cranny in the Murray-Darling Basin is full. Water's going out to sea. Mm. Um, and I, I really do believe, and I've had some people into my office this morning, that for $20 billion, we could put three times as much water into the Murray-Darling system as is needed now. And it therefore be a lot of extra water available for farmers. We resolve the environmental issues and Adelaide would have great certainty of water forever. They've really got to start doing this. I'm going to pick it up with the government and the opposition. Well, the obvious uh, solution is just to get rid of Adelaide, but um, failing that... <laughs> uh, look, look, we need to accept that there will be years of drought. And we've had a particularly bad drought the last few years, and the drought is clearly now broken. Now, I think, obviously, everybody gets very upset when there's a drought, when there's tons of water like there is at the moment. I mean, you wouldn't be launching an inquiry, no. you know, if we had several great seasons of rain. Um, I think we just need to accept that in droughts, look, it's going to be bad for the environment, bad for the farmers, bad for everyone, yeah. uh, and, and accept that in good years, people will do well. And, and to formulate a policy based entirely on the idea that drought will go on forever, or indeed entirely on the idea that there'll be solid rainfall every year, is wrong. We've got to have a flexible policy. And at the moment, we're trying to have a policy that acts as though there's a drought still on when there isn't. Yeah, and the other, the other thing is we have a lot of water going out to sea in the north, whether it be the Gulf of Carpentaria, mm. the Argyle, the, the Ord. And really, it's not that Australia is short of water, it's just it's in the wrong place. Well, but it's a big plumbing job. We've got. Well, but it is a very big plumbing job. I mean, <coughs> to say that the, yeah, I mean, the world... already done it in Libya. Well, that's right, but the world is not short of water because the, the amount of water in the world doesn't change. I mean, it's always there. It just falls in different places. Mm. Um, in Australia, it, it, you know, what if you built that and then you had a climate shift again? I, I guarantee, build a network from the north down to here, it will probably stop raining up, up north and start raining more in the south. But it just seems to be the way of things. 
uh, you know, I mean, whether it's D cell plants or whatever. I just think D cell plants the most uneconomic way of getting water that exists. We're all being conned. Yeah, it's going to put the cost of water up for everybody in the cities, particularly. Anyway, the farmers are all very upset. All of a sudden, there's a six-month inquiry into the Murray-Darling Basin, and that's bureaucrats for saying we're not actually going to do anything for quite a while. It is amazing. All they did was look at what is the water that has to be taken out for environmental purposes. They didn't look at the socio-economic <coughs> effect of doing that along all the rural towns along the Murray and the Darling. Well, there's a reason for that, because the Labor and Greens parties don't have any seats along those towns no. as a result. I mean, you've got to understand, I mean, the green supporters within the inner cities, and people in the inner city, I mean, we live there, just assume that, you know, the food grows in the back of the supermarket and just appears on the shelves magically twice a week, mm -hmm. and the water is, just comes out of the tap, and that's pretty much the end of it. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't understand what goes on up in the food bowl, and it's not in the Greens' interest to understand that, because that they don't have, I mean, no one votes for them up there, and, and sadly, that's the way politics is. Well, although if, if Adelaide could secure its water supply, there's quite a number of labour seats there. Well, as I said, but we should be getting rid of Adelaide anyway. We can't get rid of Adelaide. <laughs> um, what else was on the, on the go? James Packer getting into Channel 10. Yeah, well, as I mentioned... Like, strength, they'll, they'll, I think they'll be chasing that AFL football again. Yeah, there's no doubt. Well, I mean, Channel 9 spent... Uh, well, it did a lot for, you know, a few years ago. The football rights come up, I think, in one more year's time. And one of the big issues has been the anti-siphoning rules in sport that the... Uh, essentially, the pay TV industry, which is of course just Foxtel and to a lesser extent Ostar, would love to get its hand exclusively on more sport, but a lot of that sport under the rules is being, you know, has to stay on free to air television. So the natural thing is if you own a chunk of Foxtel, which Packer does, he owns 25% via consolidated media, is to own part of a television station. Now, he used to have one of those, Channel yeah. 9, he sold it. Channel 10 is pretty cheap, it's the only pure pay TV operation, sorry, free to air TV operation left in Australia. And uh, interestingly, he's bought himself a seat at the board. He has. Now, the last subject we'll talk about is the Spring Racing Carnival. Uh, Descudero won the Caulfield Cup. I did take a double into Say You Think in the Melbourne Cup. 7000 to 50 bucks wasn't bad. So, if Say You Think, which I think Say You Think will definitely win the Cox Plate this week. I heard um, uh, Cummings, not, not the old man, but the son, Anthony Cummings, say he thinks... So you think he'll win by four or five lengths. And he's probably the best horse we've seen. They come around every 20 or 30 years. This horse could be in the far left category. That's how good he is. And if he goes on and wins the Cox Plate, he gets a start in the Melbourne Cup. If he wins the Melbourne Cup, we'll have a little party. Well, we hope he doesn't end up like Farlap with his heart in one museum, his skin in another, and his skeleton in another again. You know, there's bits of Farlap still buried in north of San Francisco well, he, where his he, body he, is. He could very because dying. Farlap was born in New Zealand, mm. so you think was born in New Zealand. Oh. Farlap raced in Australia, so you think races in Australia. Anyway, well, it's an old saying about gambling. Oh, I wouldn't be spending the money until the horse has actually won the event. Well, one of the bookmakers, which is the most amazing thing I've ever seen, he has paid out on next Saturday's race all the people who have bet on So You Think in the Cox Plate. <laughs> oh, well. So that's amazing. All right, well, that'll do for this week. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.